In 2019, the Akron Art Museum organized the exhibition entitled Open World Video Games and Contemporary Art, showing the works of visual artists using video games in different ways. In the catalog, uh, the photographer John Pembux explained her use of the famous or maybe even notorious uh, video game Grand Theft Auto. She says, by far Grand Theft Auto is the most beautiful environment. It's also one of the most terrible games. It's really aggressive. Pulling out the beauty in these horrible things and choosing not to show the ugliness. End of quote. Contrary to many artists who are themselves players, Pembux actually takes pictures of the screens while others are playing, which leads to digital chromogenic prints that have a soft and abstract aesthetic almost resembling, resembling watercolor or acrylic paintings. As the title of the exhibition mentions, Grand Theft Auto is part of a kind of video games called Open World, which can be explored and not only played. And this is one of the many specific features of GTA that makes it particularly interesting for artists to use mainly for its creative potential but also for the many social and political interpretation and paradoxes as well as its technological function such as the director mode in GTA 5 since 2015 which enabled players and artists to shoot film inside the video game environment. As an example of that is the film by Benjamin Bardou, The Computer's Dream of Electronic Ship, in which the artist recreates the futuristic urban atmosphere of the movie Blade Runner from Ridley Scott from 1982, uh, when all the artists try to test and push back the limit of the system such as Alan Butler recording a glitch in the game in his Mashimima uh, walking into wall or in his film Hayfish when he leads uh, his character as far as possible on the ocean reaching the limits of the game's space. Consequently, GTA becomes an artistic medium in itself, taking part in the phenomenon of visual contagion from one media to another, whether it is through the form of hybridization or intermediality. In the framework of this paper, I will address the notion of visual contagion through two types of contagion. The first one being remediation, as theorized by J. David Balter and Richard Grosing in 1999 in their book Remediation, Understanding New Media. And the second one as a new way of reflection or thinking, as defined by Jussi Parika in his essay Digital Contagions, and I quote him, to produce new types of contagions of thought within cultural theory and media history, end of quote, uh, in this way by analyzing the ways in which artists, or as Anne-Marie Schleiner called them, cultural hackers, manipulate, twist, use, and even abuse of GTA to address contemporary issues such as social and political slides, normalization of surveillance, or the flow of personal data, uh, which have led to the notion of gamification developed by game designers such as uh, Jen McGonigal or Jesse Shell in a positive way, but also criticized by the philosopher and artist Ito Steyer. She explained the new visual paradigm created by video games and the virtual in our daily life. She says, gaming has a certain form in which it is organized. It has different levels and a sense of participation. Achievement is very important. You are constantly judged in relation to earning points. I think that's a way many people have learned to understand the world." End of quote. So, 
let's focus on the way that the use of GTA by artists can interpret the notion of remediation theorized by Bolter and Grezin. Both develop the double logic of remediation linked to, and I quote them, our culture's contradictory imperatives for immediacy and hypermediacy. Our culture wants both to multiply its media and erase all traces of mediation. Ideally, it wants to erase its media in the very act of multiplying them. Some artists interpret that very notion when using GTA to create artworks that remake former works of art. It offers the possibility to reinterpret the game as well as the works of art. This is the case of the previously mentioned artist Alan Butler when he remakes the photographic book of Edward Russia from 1963 entitled 26 Gasoline Station in a short eponymous film uh, mixing moving and fixed images created by the director uh, mode of GTA 5. Through the recent medium of video game, Butler reinvents the older media, which is photography, as uh, Balter and Grozin wrote, what is new about new media comes from the particular ways in which they refashion older media, end of quote. He multiplies the use of different media, video game, photography, or even film, and makes them visible, but at the same time, the video game and the photography disappear through the new film, which creates a direct screening experience, a form of hypermediacy. This type of visual contagion through remediation is even pushed further by the artist in his installation on exactitude in science, in which he exhibits side by side the original film of Godfrey Reggio Koyanikatsky from 1982 and his own remake of it in a version totally made by GTA 5, uh, frame by frame. Butler kind of hijacks the different features of the original works and reuses them to highlight the relation between the different media. This is particularly possible thanks to the ways and means of this open world where the artists have almost an absolute sense of the agency and can explore this virtual space through mobility in the environments and diversity of viewpoints. In 26 Gasoline Station, Alan Butler creates not only a copy of the real but a reality in itself through the simulation, when GTA 5 is also a simulation of her own reality. The fictional cities of the game, Los Santos and Blaine County, have replaced the different cities of Ed Russia's road trip through the United States between Los Angeles and Oklahoma City. Concerning the installation on exactitude in science, the title is inspired by George Louis Borges' short story from 1946, in which he describes a fictional civilization which would have created a map of its territory to the real life scale. In this way, Butler uh, places his film as a replica of Godfrey Reggio's film and GTA V as a replica of a world. Obviously, Butler is not the only artist who makes such a use of the explorative, creative and technological potential of the GTA series. We can also see this form of appropriation in Philip Salomon's Empire, a remake of Andy Warhol's film from 1964. Solomon totally explored the urban space of the game as Warhol's film focuses on the Empire State Building, filming it from the beginning of sunset until the complete pitch black night. Solomon uses the virtual city of GTA 5 called Liberty City, inspired by the real New York City, and transform it into a quiet, emptied of its characters and players. Contrary to Wall 8 our film, Solomon's video lasts for approximately 48 minutes and focuses on the weather and light changes. If Solomon's work is more of a visual, aesthetic and poetic experience, 
some other um, can be seen as more critical, like the study of perspective by Rock Holmes, a reenactment of Ai Weiwei's photographs, study of perspective uh, from the late 90s and the beginning of the 21st century, in which the Chinese artists give the finger to the most famous architecture worldwide. Rock Holmes questions the real power of art to be truly subversive and demystifies Ai Weiwei's performance by using the own subversiveness of the controversial video game series GTA. Through those few examples, we have seen how the artist managed to employ the video game, a medium of simulation, in order to create another simulation of its own. As we have just said, the series GTA is highly known for its subversive and controversial features, which is another reason for artists to utilize it in order to analyze uh, its ideology, but more specifically to understand our own contemporary social and political issues and open new ways of reflection. Andreas Jan Sudman and Rolf Stockman described this subversiveness as the politically incorrect present in GTA, meaning the exploitation of violence, racism and discrimination, among other things, by the creators of the game as their main characters are almost all criminals or seen as deviant people which on the other end could be quite paradoxical as the game also prides itself on criticizing the so-called American way of life. As a matter of fact, GTA provokes by using different stereotypes and bias such as gender, people of color and minorities, increasing social inequalities. This paradoxical feature in GTA is one of the reasons why Larry Ochapong and David Blandy used the game to create their installation Finding Fanon 2. The work is inspired by The Lost Place of Franz Fanon, who was a politically radical humanist whose practice dealt with the psychopathology of colonization and the social and cultural consequences of decolonization. The artist explain, and I quote, the idea that there were these fictions containing possible answers to the post-colonial condition written by such a powerful terrorist led us to the idea for a search for this lost place. The finding Fanon works are really sketches for what this place could be. End of quote. In the film, they analyze Fanon's theory and address the issues of racism and colonization. In doing so, they also explore their own personal relation and history in the post-colonial context, as a part of Larry Achapong's family comes from Ghana. The violence contained in the game meets the violence present in racism and discrimination. And this violence is not only the one from the crimes committing and the guns used in the game, but also the one from all the stereotypes implied in it. The violence can also be very explicit in some works such as the Machinima 11 executions from artist Hugo Arcier, in which the main character, controlled by the artist, starts shooting at people in public places like the beach or the highway or the office. Uh, the artist obviously refers to the different mass shooting that occurred worldwide these last few years and in a way points out the gun control policy in some countries where the flow and traffic of weapons are not properly managed. And when some artists explain the agency that GTA 5 can provide, Hugo Arcier, on the contrary, confirmed that he has little control on the reaction of the computer-generated characters shot by the main character, which gives an even more chaotic atmosphere to his work. And which is also expressed by Jan Bogost as procedural rhetoric following Janet Murray theories on procedures and agency regarding digital artifacts. Bogost writes, 
procedural systems generate behaviors based on real-based models. They are machines capable of producing many outcomes. Procedurality is the principal value of the computer, which creates meaning through the interaction of algorithm." End of quote. And concerning the GTRS series, Bogost adds, the game does not actually allow the player to do anything. Rather, GTA 3 lets you, anything, lets you do anything you wish within the parameters of the game. But procedure does not exclude expression and creativity, and as Hugo Assis's work show, there can be creation within the digital constraints. Concerning uh, the GTRE um, series, Alan Butler also addresses social issues within these constraints when using GTA 5 to create his photographic series Down and Out in Los Santos and his film Le Moment Fabriqué. Uh, the artist focuses on the non-player character, NPC, uh, the ones that the player cannot manipulate or play with who are embodied in GTA 5 by homeless people. Therefore, Butler criticizes a real society by using some specific details of the virtual environment, these almost human ghosts who are not essential to the gameplay. By using the photo and the director modes in the game, the artist creates a form of social realism by documenting poverty in the virtual world as well as in the real world, as the place occupied by the NPCs in the game is quite similar to the one in real life, especially when the digital program enabled them to identify to each other and to stay um, together. The photographs taken by Butler inside the virtual environment are voluntarily spread on social media, such as on Instagram, um, without any title or explanation, only with hashtags, and uh, they eventually end up being liked by digital bots in a digital space. This space between real and virtual is explained by the artist as a feature, uh, and I quote, between our digitally mediated reality and the algorithmic and procedural representation of this reality, the feature in the line between the virtual simulated and the real, end of quote. By using the digital and virtual environment, as well as the subversive and controversial features of the GTR series to address some of the social and political issues of our contemporary society, the artist seems to have partially answered the concern raised by uh, Fred Turner, the author of From Counterculture to Cyberculture, when he says in a recent interview, I quote, when we built a world that doesn't take account of differences, but rather tries to neutralize them in a single process, or a single code system, or under a single ethical rubric, what you end up doing is erasing precisely the kinds of differences that need to be negotiated. By uh, using, playing, replaying, and remaking the series GTA, visual artists analyze its meanings as well as its technological features in order to understand, criticize, or highlight our contemporary society. They address our social and political issues through a complex and paradoxical video game, uh, the so-called best-selling cultural product in the world, uh, in this way, GTA, but more broadly video games, are mediums which participate to the phenomenon of visual contagion through remediation and appropriation, as well as a new way of uh, reflection for the contemporary images. These contagions, from video games to art and vice versa, exist through transforming processes, quotations, remaking, etc. It creates a critical address towards a current concerns and explores the social, political and economical dimensions of video games. This contagions is also part of a new history of new media, as Shane Denson wrote, 
digital and post-cinematic media technologies do not just produce a new type of image, they establish entirely new configurations and parameters of perception and agency, placing spectators in an unprecedented relation to images and the infrastructure of their mediation." End of quote. And video games are part of these digital media technologies linked to the artistic world as visual artists play games or observe those around them playing, which affect the practice. And we have seen that art can benefit from being influenced by video games through the agency and involvement it provides and the experience and entertainment it procures. Video games change our way of perceiving and experiencing the world through new technological infrastructures in the logic of simulation and immediacy which stimulates other media aesthetic. Thank you for your attention.